Greetings and welcome back to Astrophotography Japan. I'm JP Astro Guy here in Yokohama. As you can see, I've got a telescope out tonight with an eyepiece, so I'll be doing some visual astronomy. That bright illumination behind me in the background is a nearly full moon. Tonight I'll be testing out this brand new eyepiece that I purchased from Zerboni. This is the SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece. I'm going to compare it to some eyepieces that I currently already own. For instance, I have a set of these Astrotech Paradigm eyepieces, and I have one high-end Bader Morpheus eyepiece. So if you're interested in hearing my opinion on the performance of the SV230 against these two, stick around. Bordel class 7 to 8 skies here in Yokohama, Japan are not exactly conducive to exciting visual astronomy. However, if there are celestial events, such as visiting comets, eclipses, conjunctions, or even if the seasons change, that does motivate me. Unfortunately, in recent months, getting more than a few hours of clear skies during any night has been a rare occurrence. But I managed to test out the new Zviboni SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece on three occasions. The first time I used it was with my MK105 Maxitoff telescope, also from Zviboni, on September 6th. On this night, it was nearly a full moon, which was ideal. Being a mirror-based reflector design, actually it is a catadioptric design with a glass corrector element in the front, the Maxitoff telescope is well known to display very little to no chromatic aberration. So I surmise that when observing with the SV230 eyepiece, any chromatic aberration might likely be the result of the eyepiece itself. Looking at the bright full moon and Saturn that night, I could not see any color fringing with the MK105. Of course I looked using the full range of magnification available, which was achieved by dialing the zoom feature from 20mm down to 8mm providing magnifications from 68 to 170 times. The views were bright and beautiful and clear. For the moon, this eyepiece was excellent and convenient since it was not necessary to change eyepieces for higher power observations. Changing the zoom setting on this eyepiece is not supposed to affect the focus, a feature that is referred to as being parfocal. However, I was not able to confirm that this night because I stupidly brought my erecting prism Stellaview diagonal that has a twistable fine focus feature. This diagonal is great for prime focus eyepieces, but twisting the SV230 zoom eyepiece also twisted the fine focus too. I think you can see my dilemma. Two nights later, much to my delight and surprise, we had a perfectly clear night for a full lunar eclipse. On this night I brought out my SV48P refractor telescope, also from Sviboni, to test it with the SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece. I used the AM3 mount in Alt-As mode to provide convenient tracking of the skies, which was helpful since there were many photographers there to capture that rare lunar event on an unusually clear night. Of course, everyone wanted to glimpse the moon through the telescope, as you might expect. I made a video brief of that spontaneous star party and provided a link in the notes if you are interested in that. On the eclipse night, I brought along an Astrotech mirror diagonal, which would securely hold the SV230 eyepiece and allow me to rotate only the zoom control. Obviously, I was curious to inspect it for parfocal characteristics, as were claimed by Zviboni. Interestingly, it did not seem parfocal to me at all. I always had to readjust the focus between magnification settings. That confused me. So I pondered this for a while and then realized that I do not use my glasses when viewing through an eyepiece. My vision has a fairly strong stigmatism. So my suspicion was that my viewing eye required refocus to adjust for the magnification change. Then when I tested viewing while wearing my reading glasses, the need to refocus was indeed reduced or eliminated. Interesting. But no matter, I can live with that slight inconvenience caused by my eyesight. 
A few weeks later, on September 24th, there was another opportunity to take out the SV48P refractor. This night I again used Altaz tracking and also had my finder scope on a tiny XY mount to fine tune the alignment with the telescope because I wanted to do some high power observations using a focal extender lens. Specifically I wanted to observe both Jupiter and Saturn and some stars under high magnification. A few years ago when I first started with astronomy, I bought a set of Paradigm ED eyepieces from Astronomics. Soon thereafter, I invested in one very high-end unit from Bader, the Morpheus 12.5mm eyepiece. This Morpheus eyepiece was purchased primarily for planetary viewing and has been my quality gold standard eyepiece ever since. The 3X Explorer Scientific Focal Extender Lens I used is also very high quality maintaining the visual integrity of this optical tube assembly. Actually, I own three Explorer Scientific Focal Extenders, 2X, 3X, and 5X. The telescope being used here, the SV48P, is the weak link in this OTA, being only a dual-lens acromat. However, it is fully multi-coated. Nevertheless, some chromatic aberration was expected and was observed but the degree of it was fairly minor, and I find that really does not bother me. Now, let me summarize what I've learned from these three nights of visual astronomy using the quality eyepieces I described here earlier. How do they really perform? Perhaps we should start by comparing the physical characteristics of these eyepieces. They are all shown here. As you can see, they vary in size substantially, with the SV230 being the largest in dimension. As you might expect, it is also the heaviest because it is a zoom eyepiece with internal mechanical features. It also has the most glass elements as well, indicating quite a complex design. Among the three eyepieces, the optical end of the Bader has the widest lens at 36mm in diameter. However, the SV230 comes pretty close at 32mm. By the way, in this comparison, the focal lengths were not exact matches, but I did select similar values to minimize any variation, so I think it is a valid comparison. For each of these eyepieces, the eye relief and apparent fields of view are given here. The Bader Morpheus eyepiece has the largest values in both of these categories, but I have found that even at 15 millimeters, the eye relief on the Paradigm eyepiece was quite comfortable and the 57 to 72 degrees apparent field of view of the SV230 is rather remarkable for a zoom eyepiece. If you set it at 13 millimeters, I would estimate the field of view is probably around 62 to 63 degrees, so closer to the paradigm than the Bader Morpheus. Now when you buy these eyepieces, the Bader Morpheus and SV230 come with nice fabric cases. The Paradigm eyepieces do not, but rather are packed in a typical padded plastic container. I'm especially impressed with the SV230 eyepiece case, since it is lined with padding to provide extra protection. From a pricing perspective, the Bader Morpheus is the highest priced among the three. I don't necessarily pay attention to the Zverboni list prices, since they constantly discount and frequently even have special sales on top of those discounted prices. I bought this SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece for just under 300 US dollars when it was on sale. Note, in this table, I put the SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece information in the middle here for convenience. And in the next few slides, I will give you my opinion on the seven different criteria that I used in the column on the left. Keep in mind that all of these comparisons and ratings are subjective opinions of mine. They are mine only. This is not a scientific study. It is my personal evaluation and using my personal experience viewing with these eyepieces on three different nights on different targets and under different OTA configurations. The first criteria or parameter is image clarity. I think it is a common opinion among visual astronomers worldwide that the Paradigm eyepieces are very good quality and an excellent value. I suspect they are one of the highest selling eyepiece designs on the market, 
they are available under several different brand names from multiple suppliers. But the Bader Morpheus and Zviboni SV230 are no doubt a bit superior in terms of image clarity. The same can be said for image brightness, which I think is partially influenced by clarity and contrast. The Morpheus and SV230 eyepiece seem to be indistinguishable on these two parameters of clarity and brightness. As for contrast, I definitely have to give the edge to the Bader Morpheus eyepiece. I don't think it requires any more explanation than that. It is a bit similar to contrast, but I want to talk separately about background. I have singled this out as a separate criteria because I have noticed that there are no light gradients in the Bader Morpheus field of view. From edge to edge, the contrast and background is consistent. But I see a bit of an edge effect in the Zviboni and Paradigm eyepieces. To me, there appears to be a very slight brightening or halo effect around the outer edges of the field of view. I suspect, however, that this halo effect is an issue made worse by the Bortle class 7 to 8 skies here in Yokohama. Under darker skies, this very slight halo edge effect might not even be noticeable. At some point, I will most certainly test it under darker skies, but that will have to wait. As for focus integrity, checking from center to edge or edge to edge, the SV230 matches the Beta Morpheus in quality. Stars look round and pinpoint, even out to the edges of the field of view. And I mean it, even right at the very edge. The SV230 image is excellent in this regard. The Paradigm eyepiece performs well on this parameter compared to other similar priced eyepieces, but simply does not match up to the Bader or SV230 on this feature. None of these eyepieces displayed any chromatic aberration that I could trace back to the eyepiece itself. They all look very good on the MK105 Maxitoff scope, which being primarily a reflector, has essentially no chromatic aberration. And on the SV48P Acromat refractor, I could see no real differences in the observable bright planetary or moon images. Hence, no chromatic aberration is my assessment for any of these eyepieces at focal lengths I used in this analysis, which was 500 to 1500 millimeters. I'm sure you recall this review is really about the Zviboni SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece. To be honest, I did not really need this eyepiece. As you can see, I already own some very good prime focus eyepieces that get the job done. The allure of the SV230 was not just its super zoom capability, but the pairing of that with excellent engineering and superior performance at a reasonable price. I'm very satisfied with my purchase of it, and will probably make it my primary eyepiece on most visual astronomy nights in the future. The zoom range is very wide, from 8mm all the way up to 20mm. The visual experience is equivalent to higher priced primary lenses on a number of important features. Nobody can argue with the convenience of a zoom eyepiece. And its apparent field of view is very impressive for this type of lens configuration. The construction quality is top tier. In fact, you can feel it in every click of the twistable zoom feature. It's also nice to have the option to use it with 2 inch diagonals, although I do not own one. And the SV230 comes with a handy and good quality protective carry case. My only criticisms might be something I heard others complain about, and I have experienced for myself. The eye cup is actually a bit too deep. It would be ideal to shave off a few millimeters to prevent forced contact with your face when viewing. But you know, I suspect this is only an issue for us Caucasians. We have deeper set eyes than most Asians, so I suspect this is not an issue for Asians at all. Funny, huh? I am still a bit uncertain about the parfocal claim. I guess it may depend on your eyes, which I never realized until now. Mechanically, it might be parfocal, but practically for me, it simply is not. And just beware of that vision-related phenomena. It was news to me. But personally, I don't really care. It is a habit of mine, anyways, to always tweak focus 
to get it just right after changing anything. And then finally, at half a kilogram, the SV230 is a big eyepiece, but that really did not cause any issues, not even for my new manual SV225 mini mount. And to be honest, I was a bit concerned about using it with the Explore Scientific focal extender lenses, since they are also quite large. But the interface connections were solid and secure, and it did not seem to really be an issue. So in summary, this eyepiece is not inexpensive, but the performance is probably one of the best, if not the best, zoom eyepieces on the market. I'm very satisfied with my purchase of it, and absolutely do recommend it. I hope that this comparison and review was helpful to you. I know that this video is really an opinion piece and not like my usual data-rich YouTube videos. Nevertheless, it hopefully gives you some insights, especially if you're considering to add the SV230 SuperZoom eyepiece to your equipment portfolio. In Yokohama, Japan, gazing at the stars, I am JP Astro Guy. My name is Paul Cheesegel, and this has been Astrophotography Japan.